Hello everyone, my name is Rahul and welcome to my channel. In this video, let's go back to some programming basics and look at constructors and how we can enforce different invariants. In C Sharp or any object oriented programming, constructor is how you create an object. The constructor is responsible for initializing the object's data members and establishing the class invariants. A constructor must throw an exception if it doesn't meet the class invariants. An invariant is just an assertion that is always held true, something that you can always rely on on the object's member. Let's take an example here. Let's say I have a public class name. Let's add in a constructor there. And we have a property string value, which is going to hold the name's value. We don't want to be able to create a name without a value. So let's go and remove the default constructor and add in a parameter here saying value. So this sets the value of the name class when it's created. However, there's nothing stopping from me sending a null value in here. If we think the name cannot be null, Let's add an extra condition here, which is an invariant that the value can never be null. So I'm adding an argument null exception in case name is null. So let's go and create a new name class instance. And I pass in a value Rahul. I cannot create a name by passing in a null value or without any value because the constructor is going to make sure it doesn't happen. However, in this case, there's nothing stopping me from going and setting the value to null here. This means the class is now not enforcing its constraint on its public methods. An invariant must hold true after the constructor is finished and at the entry and exit of all public member functions. That's not the case here because we are able to set the value property directly. In order to fix this, we could go and make this as a private set which enables the value to be set only from within the class. No longer can we set the value here. This throws a compile time error, so I'm forced to remove this line. However, let's imagine we have a function in this class name which prints the value. Since we have a private set, we can now go and set value is equal to null. This is also failing the invariant. To solve this, you could have two ways. Either make sure that you don't have such a line in there, which is up to the person who is writing the class or modifying the class, or you can update this private to be a read-only field. Now this value can only be set from within the constructor. You have a compile time error again. So now this is not allowed anymore. By doing this, we have reached to a state where this name class is immutable, which means once you create an instance of that with some data, you cannot change that. Now there is no way of changing the value of the name class instance. Let's look at a few other examples of where these constraints are getting maintained. Where leap year, we use the datetime class from the C-sharp base libraries and pass in the values of the day, month and year explicitly. In this case, year. So 2020, February was a leap year. So if I was to give 0, 2 and 29, this should create me a valid leap year. So let me run this and you can see it passes successfully. If you wanted to see that, you can actually say dump, which is part of Linkpad, which is the editor that I'm working on right now. The new date time successfully created a leap year in this case. If I was to change the year, from 2020 to 2019, this should be throwing an exception. You can see this is describing an unrepresentable date time. So the constructor of date time here is actually making sure that such a date exists. If I was to say 2020 and say 30 here, which is 30 days, which is also invalid, it would still say the same. So the constructor at runtime here is making sure that the instance cannot be created because it's an invalid. Datetime is something that you cannot represent. If we were to do something similar, let's say we have a date range class. So we have two properties. Let's add a new constructor. And we don't want to be creating a, a, an empty date range. So we force whoever is creating date range to pass in a start date and an end date. However, for a date range class, the constraint that we need to maintain is that the end date 
cannot be less than the start date. So anytime somebody is going to create a date range object, they need to make sure that this constraint is always enforced. And since I have blocked overriding these properties once they are created, I don't have to worry about this anymore in the class at all. So these constraints is now going to be maintained once the object is created. This is very similar to the date time class constraints that we saw before. So in, in the business, we might have different constraints. I have a quote class here, which I have created previously, which has an ID, a status, a customer, a mobile phone, and a list of accessories that you can purchase as part of the mobile phone. This represents a typical quote for purchasing a mobile phone and a few accessories. I have the relevant classes defined here, but which are all not populated, which is not relevant for this example. Let's look at how we can enforce constraints, business constraints that's relevant to the business in this class. I want to be able to create a quote if I just have a customer. So once I enter in the customer details, I need to be able to instantiate a quote and save that into the database. Let's imagine. So let's add a quote constructor and add an ID and one that takes just the customer. I have a constraint that the customer should not be null. So as before, let's make sure we check for null and throw an argument null exception if that is null. When a code is created like this, this is in a draft status. So let's go ahead and set the status here to be draft because we know that if you have created a code with an ID and a customer, it needs to be in draft. The mobile phone object in this case, it's a value object, which means the equality of that object is based on the values that it holds. I have a null value object pattern going on here. So I'll use the mobile phone dot empty and the list of accessories is already instantiated. So it's going to be an empty list. Let's say now we have created a quote and we need to add a phone to that and want to recreate that from the database. Well, let's say from the UI, we are able to come up with a customer and the phone at the same time. So now we need a constructor that takes in the ID, the customer and the phone. I will copy and paste this constructor and add in a mobile phone and a code status. So we'll set these as expected. Now we are repeating these code. So let's see how we can improve that. Let's remove all this code from here. So we could call in to the constructor that's written here from this customer. So we need to pass the mobile phone, which we were using as empty and the code status was draft. So whenever someone uses the constructor with the lesser parameters, it's going to piggyback and call the other constructor with the default parameters. We have another constraint in the business, which says if the code status is not draft, which means if it's of the any of the other statuses, let's say open, accepted or expired, the mobile phone cannot be null. Because once you have opened a code, it means it needs to have a phone associated. And that's a business constraint, which can be checked when you're creating the object in this case. So if mobile phone is equal to null and the code status is not equal to draft, in this case, we have a domain constraint. So let's throw a domain exception here. This could be modified to take in and check for mobile phone is empty and whatever you want. This is how you maintain the business constraints. Constructors are the entry point to your class instances. Make them fail fast if the state is illegal. It helps you to remove a lot of unnecessary defensive checks and codes that you might write elsewhere in the code. Hope this helps you to get an idea on how to use constructors and enforce the invariance through them. If you found this video useful, please hit the like button. If you want to be notified of future videos, Please don't forget to subscribe. Thank you.